me, Chris Kelly. I am in the rubber room in Rochester Hills, Michigan, and I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. It is Wednesday, and I am here to share my weekly class with you. I usually I come on at 10, and today I'm just a little bit later. I wanted to share with you a class that I did last night, and um, so... I wanted to um, just hold off a little bit until I got it all prepped and ready to go. So I'm just going to pop on here, make sure I am in the right spot. <laughs> Facebook has so many changes going on all the time that I always like to check and um, be sure where I am and what I'm doing. So it looks like I am in the right spot. And like you can see me, so that makes us good to go. If you're here with me, leave me a comment and let me know I'm not all out here all alone, right? <laughs> so we did a Spotlight on Nature class last night, and that includes this stamp set, which I think is gorgeous. We focused on just this um, flower. It looks like kind of a tulip image, and our sentiments, but the... Um, butterfly and the leaves are absolutely just as gorgeous and just as amazing. And then it comes with these dies. So they are coordinating dies, but as you can see, they are circles. So this comes in a bundle, and um, starting today, our bundles are on sale. So you can get the um, Spotlight on Nature bundle and get this great stamp set and these dies for an additional 10% off, which is a great deal. And I will post a link here for you when I'm done so you can scoop up that deal. We're also going to be using these Stylish Shapes dies and the circles in this. Okay, so let's get started. Um, if you've ever taken a class, you know this is what your how your cards come, your little packet. And so you take your piece of cardstock and pull it right off the top. I can see I'm getting an extra one there. And that's all the card pieces I need for my first card. Okay, let me just grab my basket here which should have the other things I need to make my card in it. This was a product-based class, so you did get a half a pack of the Country Woods Designer Series paper and the Country Lace Designer Series paper, which are all part of a um, Country Lane uh, bundle. I think it's Country Lane Bundle. So you've got half a pack of each of those designer series paper. You've got a spool of twine. And then you've got these amazing adhesive back textured dots. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. But they have just a little tiny like dotted pattern on the top of them. They're very, very cool. Okay, so let's get started. We have all of our pieces here. And I'm going to start with our card part, our card base. This is Pool Party cardstock, and we have scored it at four and a quarter and two and an eighth. So I'm just going to fold and burnish on that score line, and then that second score line, which is at two and an eighth, I am going to just fold back. So you, what you're going to get is that nice Z fold card. And we are going to put this piece of early espresso cardstock on top of it. And this is at 5 and 3 eighths by 4 and 1 eighth. And what I'm going to do is put my adhesive on this left edge of my early espresso cardstock. And that's the only place I'm going to put it and on, on my espresso. And then on my pool party, I'm going to put some at the top and the bottom, being sure I don't go all the way to that edge because we do want a little bit of a border there. So on the top of that Z fold, I'm just going to give it some adhesive. And then I'm going to put this down, my early espresso, and just give it a little tiny border. Okay. 
And then I have these three pieces of designer series paper. And they are going to coordinate and fit together just like this. I'm going to put them on top of my early espresso. This was like my very favorite piece of designer series paper from that, I think it's called Country Woods. And it's just, it, they're all amazing, gorgeous pieces of paper from that packet. But this was like my favorite piece in there. And then these are going to go on and they're going to have about that much of an edge. But I'm just going to really lightly set it on there. And now put it in until I get them all on there. And with the early espresso, it matches so well that you kind of have that feel that it's all one piece of designer series paper. And I'm just going to get them right where I want them. So I'm going to put them down. And then I have this die cut. And there are a lot of little holes in there. So I'm going to take my Oh, I said I take your pick tool over on the other table. Let me see if I can do it with this one. So I'm just going to poke out some of these. I'm not going to go crazy and do all of them, but you can't. I guess I am going to do all of them. It'll just take a minute here. Um, if you want, you can do use your die cutting machine and add to your sandwich a piece of wax paper. And that will kind of pull all of these off when you take your wax paper off. I didn't do it on these because I had um, people at class last night and I had classes to go also that I prepped for. So I kind of just left them in and everybody was on their own to, to punch those out. Which is kind of good because I do have some customers who like to leave some of them in. They don't like to take all of them out. I kind of leave a little mess around, but I got a little vacuum at our Christmas gift exchange, and it's going to just pick all of those right up, so I'll just do that real quick so I don't get them in everything here. There we go. Because we don't want those in our tape and all of that other stuff. Okay, and then I'm going to, I got a little banner also using these stylish shapes and dies. Okay, and I'm just gonna add that flat on here. Right there. And then I'm gonna add this to the top of my card. Okay are with me so far. Those of you who got this to go, when I send your kit to you, which will be um, Friday, I will also email you a link to this so you'll have the video as your guide for putting the, your stamps, your cards together. So let's do this. Because this is kind of a larger stamp, I'm going to ink it while it's face up. So I'm just going to ink it on here. I do have my glass mat under my um, grid paper. So if you hear that, that's kind of the noise that you're, you're hearing. I'm not going to worry about where I'm putting it on my um, card because I am going to be cutting it out. And then I'm also going to take our sentiment. And for this one, we're going to use the thanks that was also in there. Just stamping it anywhere on this piece of paper because we are going to cut that out also. Okay, and then I have some pool party and petal pink um, blends. So always want to shake your blends. So they, whatever settled in there, gets out and about. And I'm going to start with my light. I always start with my light, and I always use the blunt tip. You can, of course, do whatever feels right to you. Some people like to start with their dark and then blend in from there. 
Some people like to use their brush tip when they have a certain size image. So whatever feels right to you and whatever you like the look of, that's the way you want to go. So I'm just giving it a light coat with my petal pink. I'm going to shake up my dark petal pink. I'm going to add that in just where the shading lines are. And that's going to give it just a little bit of extra dimension on there. I'm going to leave this one out because I am going to go back and do it one more time. Again, I'm going to start with my light pool party on my leaves. And sometimes I think pool party looks a little green. So I am okay with adding that as my leaf color. And we're just going to quickly color those up. And then again, I'm going to come in with my dark, give it a little shake, and add some color there. And your shading is going to give it just a little bit more dimension. Add a little more of my light to kind of blend those two together. And you do if you work a little more quickly when um, that ink is still a little bit wet, it blends a little bit easier. So I'm coming back in with I'm gonna do my dark petal pink again. Just want a little bit more color there. Oh yeah, that's much more like what I wanted. And you could always add some coral here. You can add some different colors depending on how light or dark you want your outline to be. Okay? I got a new little scissors charm when we were in Mexico. Thank you, my friend Lisa Bauer made that for me. I absolutely love it. So for now, we are going to cut out our image here. And while I'm cutting it out, I am going to share with you about our sales. If you are a demonstrator, I know there is a lot going on right now. We can um, pre-order our glass mat. We can pre-order from the online exclusives. I did my online exclusive pre-order today because in July we're going to be doing another online exclusive extravaganza. If you haven't been to one of those, they are a lot of fun. There are actually three classes and each class features a, an item from the online exclusives. We do that because our online exclusives are not in our catalog, so they tend to get overlooked. But boy, these were some great stamp sets and dies and papers. So I'm excited to share them with you. And you will be able to order them in July if you are not a demonstrator. So um, again, you will have to go on and look on the website, but I'll give you a little reminder when um, that time gets closer so you can shop. We will be doing at the online exclusive extravaganza, we're gonna do a fall card class, a Halloween card class, and a Christmas card class. And um, they're all so, so exciting and so pretty. I'm, I'm really not in the mood for holidays quite yet, but, um, we can do Christmas in July, which is always a good time. I usually start my Christmas club then so that we have a few months where you can make Christmas cards every week and then get stocked up so that when Thanksgiving rolls around, your Christmas cards are done and you can kind of tick that off your Christmas list once that season comes in and you get so busy, I know it's always a, a struggle to um, get those cards done and get them out 
and there's so many other things going on that you want to be enjoying at Christmas time that um, we don't want to have to have that kind of last minute rush and struggle. So um, we'll be posting uh, details about the Christmas Club coming up and starting date. So lots of fun things coming up. In fact, um, I just moved the date to RSVP for my Rest, Relax, and Enjoy um, class. Marielle designed that class. Marielle is my helper. She um, does my displays in my studio for me. And she also designs one class a month for me, which is a really nice benefit for my customers because they get um, a chance to see somebody else design. And uh, Marielle and I have very, very different styles. So it's a nice chance for them to get away from my style a little bit and still enjoy some stamping. So um, I did, I'm waiting on some paper to get here. So I did put that date out. Today was the last day to sign up. So I moved that to Friday because um, then I can prep over the weekend. And hopefully my paper will be here by then. So there is still time to sign up for that. And um, I will be putting, I shared just a little snippet, sneak peek of one card today. And I think I'm going to be able to share the other um, card and project with you also. Just little sneak peeks. We're going to do a little organdy bag with some lavender buds in it. Um, lavender is one of my favorite favorite relaxing scents and Marielle's designing with the painted lavender sweet so that's going to be a lot of fun that paper is so so beautiful so that's something to look forward to and then of course I have my monthly clubs coming up and um, my product based class this was so that one is out of the way for the month, but lots of fun things happening in the rubber room. And you, of course, don't want to miss that bundle sale. Even if you don't have a machine, now is a great time to pick up the machine. It is also on sale for 10% off. And that goes for the white mini machine, which you guys see me using all the time here. And I will be using it again today. Um, and the Boho Blue mini machine and then the full-size stamp and cut and emboss machine. So all of them are on sale, and that is a great price on all of them to get that 10% off. Okay, so I have this little thanks here. I'm gonna cut that too. And I'm just gonna give a little trim around it. I'm gonna leave a white trim it on it to kind of pop it a, a little bit. I think these products all go really, really well together. Um, the dots are probably meant to be for a little more masculine kind of card, but I think they work really well with this card. So I, um, they, when we're going to actually add some color to them with our blends on another card that we're doing. So we, we did have a, a great time last night and we did some masking paper and a couple of different fun folds, some simple stamping. So we just had a really good time. And of course we have a great team and some team members were there some customers were there so it was a really really fun time that's of course my favorite time in the rubber room is when i'm here with my friends and stamping i actually got to do that on monday so it's been like a bullet here I had some of my downline and friends over on Monday, and we did some um, cards that I shared here, I think yesterday, maybe the day before, using our um, suite from the upcoming 
Creativity Now program. I want to get this little white part in here out. And I guess maybe, let's see if I can. Yeah, I want to get that out. So I'm just going to take my little, your take your pick tool we'll use. You can, will work. But I'm just going to put a little hole in here. And this actually is like a, I don't even know what you call it. I'm sure it has a name, but I'm just going to get a little hole in here. It's an old Stampin' Up! product that I still keep around and use. But by making that hole, I can then get my scissors right in here. You can use a little tiny hole punch if you want to. Um, again, your take your pick tool will work. But that allows me just to get my scissors right in there and easily get that middle, middle piece cut out. There we go. Okay, now I'm gonna pop these up on some dimensionals. So your little mini dimensionals are the best ones to use here. And I am going to cut some in half because I want to be able to get them down here on the stems. I'm just gonna go in this way, I think. So now that I have these half pieces, and actually the big tops, I'm going to use the regular dimensionals on. So the regular dimensionals are going to go right on the big kind of tulip part. And then I'm just going to come in. There's kind of an edge piece that I will put right there. And then take the little mini pieces. and use those cut them in half and they're very very tiny skinny little pieces <laughs> but they're gonna allow us to go ahead and um, pop up a whole part of the flower and still have it be stable on our card front and we do have so many um, different adhesives that you can use too. So we have lots that we can make work here. And that piece I didn't get cut. So you can cut them tiny enough that they'll work on these stems. There we go. And let's put other half in here on the top of the tulip. Okay. And I'm going to put them just on the T in our things because the rest of it is going to go up on our words. But we want that T to be popped up on the end so that it's at the same level as our um, flowers. I actually, I'm going to bring my trash in here and just empty it right into the trash bin as I take the wax off. I think that um, these little mini dimensionals are my favorites to use when I have these kind of smaller die cuts. A lot of people will use their adhesive sheet on here. We have adhesive sheets and adhesive strips and then our dimensionals and big and mini. So we have lots of choices. I'm just gonna put this right on here and I'm okay with it going over the top of my circle. And then I'm just gonna put my thanks. I'm going to actually add a little bit of green glue on the end here so it will stick to the flower part. If I don't do that, sometimes it'll get hooked on the envelope or something funky like that. Okay really didn't get that straight at all. There we go. 
Okay, so this is kind of a really simple, quick and easy fun fold that just opens like that. I love it. Okay, let me see who's here before we move on. I'm gonna pull that back just a little bit. And hi, Carol. Hi, Sherry. Yes, the dryer sheet will work also, Sherry. <laughs> you definitely do need this set. <laughs> You do. It's, it is one of my favorites. And I'm, I'm going to have another class where I just focus on the butterfly and the leaves because they are so amazing. But there we go. Okay, so our next one's going to be a, a fun one that we are going to do with um, some masking paper and some blending brushes. So let's go. I'm going to go a little bit out of order, and that's going to be our last card instead of our next card. So, if you have heard of simple stamping, um, simple stamping is paper, ink, and stamps. So that's kind of really all you need. You're not using die cuts, you're not using punches, you're not using... Um, embossing folders, you're just using stamps, paper, and ink. So that's kind of what we're going to be doing. And we're going to kick it up just a notch with um, some blending brushes. So this is Fresh Freesia paper. It's four and a quarter by 11, scored at five and a quarter and then on the 11 inch side. And then we're just going to burnish it. And then this is some of the um, country lace paper, which I love. That whole country woods suite is just, or country lane suite, it's just, it was one of my favorites in the new catalog. Um, and when we had, I just had to have it. had birdhouses and um, flowers. It was just, it, it, it is just gorgeous. And again, you can get those um, dies and bundles at half off, or I'm sorry, 10% off <laughs> today. So. Okay, so this is our designer series paper, and then we have masks here. So this is cut with a large stitched circle, and then this one is cut with a smaller stitched circle. So we're, and I left the whole sheet because I wanna cover up my whole piece of designer series paper. If I use a smaller sheet, then I tend to blend and get it on my paper, and I don't wanna do that. So this comes, I'm in a sheet this size and I just left my sheet whole and you're just going to peel off the back and then this part is really really sticky so I am going to stick it on my clothes I think you can actually let me see if I can dab my emboss you can see how sticky it is it's my embossing buddy on it I just want to make it so it's not quite so sticky. I want it to stick, but I don't want it to tear my paper up when I take it off. Okay, so we have some sticky embossing buddy on it. We have it on my pants. So I'm going to put my circle in the top left corner. I'm actually going to tip it up and make sure it's where I want it to be. And it, it looks good to me. So I'm just going to kind of push these down. And then we have this piece with the smaller circle. So I'm going to take this smaller circle, peel my back off it, and again, try and make it not so sticky. It looks like this embossing buddy might be the trick. Okay, and then I'm just going to lift this edge and kind of pull it up under there. Okay, and then I'm going to come in. I want my coloring to be kind of light, so I'm using Bubble Bath and Fresh Freesia. And actually, before I start blending, I'm going to take three of these little dots. And I'm just going to do this right now because I want them to have a few minutes to dry. So these dots come in big 
and then small. So I'm going to take my basic black blend and I'm going to use my little um, nib end and I'm going to color three of them. I'm going to focus on a black spotlight on this car. So coloring in black is just going to kind of flow a little more with um, the color that I want. I want that to pop a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to set that aside. And I also am going to take a piece of my twine and I'm going to color it. I don't know about you guys, but sometimes I manage to get my twine so knotted up. I have no idea how I do it, just that it is something that I do. And it always seems to happen when I get right down to the bottom of my twine. That little last layer seems to be all messed up all the time. But I think I can get enough off here. That we can tie it in a bow. Well, I'm just. There we go. So I'm going to move this out of the way. And I'm going to take the brush end of my marker, my blend. You can use your marker for this too if you want. We did find that the marker on our um, dots didn't dry real well. So the blends works better for that. But I think with your twine, it's not really going to matter. And I'm holding my, my blending brush flat so I don't ruin the tip on it. It's still going to have a really nice flat tip. Okay. And then I'm just going to set that aside while we do our blending, okay? So I'm going to do my bubble bath first. My bigger circle first. And um, that's just the way that my head works in order for me to wrap my brain around it. So I have my fresh breeze and I'm just going to tap my small blending brush real lightly in it. And I'm going to go in and add just a little bit of color. And I'm going very lightly because I don't want those dark color blotches on there. I want to be able to see that there's ink on it, but not be able to necessarily identify it as being a bright color sticking out there. Okay. And you can add just a little a little bit more to clean that brush off. And you can, of course, go darker if you want to. And you can save your masking paper if you want. But we're going to take off our masking paper and our little circle. So you can put, leave these two together and save them if you want to do another card, whatever you want to do. But we are going to now take off the back of the smaller circle, okay? So this is the smaller circle. We did two sheets of masking paper, a big circle and a small circle. This is the smaller one. And I'm gonna bring my, I think I'm gonna double it up because that really kind of worked well. It wasn't too sticky. So I'm gonna bring in my little embossing buddy. Just kind of pat it down. And you can also use post-it notes. I have a friend that told me post-it notes come in whole sheets like that. So you can, of course, use that. And I'm just going to set that right on top of our other small circle. So there's just a little tiny bit sticking out. And I can see, see this edge over here that I didn't get with my paper? I'm going to 
bring in my other piece and stick it right under there because if I can somehow find my way over to this edge with my blending brush, I will. So I want all of my designer paper covered up, okay? And then I'm going to come in with my Fresh Freesia. And I'm going to color this circle here. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to tap lightly, push it off, and then add some color. And I don't, again, want to add a whole lot of color. I just want you to be able to see that there's some color there. And because we layered these circles using the um, masking paper, you're going to have what looks like a whole lot of dimension on your card. Let's pull this one out. And this one off. Okay? So you can see that it, it looks like you have a whole lot of dimension there with the pink on the top and um, the purple on the bottom. In fact, I might go in... I think I'm going to and just add a little more pink there. So I'm going to just bring my mask back in. Add it back on top of here. I'm just going to make it a tad bit darker. Decker just right around my edges there. Um, bring in my other brush. And how dark or light you make it is totally up to you. That is just a very personal preference. Some of the gals last night made it really, really dark, and it was just as beautiful as the ones that were really, really light. I'm going to try and give it kind of a little shadowy effect around the edge so it gets lighter towards the middle of the circle. Okay. Oh, definitely better. I like it better that way. Okay, and now, you again, this is just um, our patterned paper. So we started off with that piece of patterned paper and then added the two circles with our blending brushes. We're going to bring our stamp back in. And again, I'm inking it upside down. And I'm just going to stamp my flower. I'm going to go off the top just a tiny bit. And then I'm going to add my word. And again, I'm going to make this a thanks. Here we go. And then I have this piece of twine. Now, because I colored it, it's kind of stiff. You can see it's straightened right out, and it's a little stiff. So I'm just going to do this with it. But before I do that, I'm going to make a really big mess here. And I'm going to do some flicking. So I'm going to take my black blending brush and give it a little bit of a shake. And i got to get that out of the way. I'm going to do what's called flicking. So I'm going to take the cap to my marker. I'm going to hold it flat. And I'm just going to touch the top of it against and pull. So I'm holding the top of it against my marker and pulling and you can see <clears throat> it's giving kind of that dotted look and you can again do this as light or as dark as you want to and I think that is good and then we're going to just take our twine that we dyed black with our blends I didn't leave myself enough room for bunny ears so We'll do a loop-de-loop. -loop. And I'm going to make that just a tad smaller. There we go. I'm going to cut this end off. And 
I'm just going to add it with a little glue dot. Well, you know what? Before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and put it on my card base. And I think I'm going to lift it up on my card base. If we were keeping it to a simple card, we of course wouldn't have done the masking and the blending and all, all of that. And we would just attach it right to our card base. But I think I'm going to pop it up for just a little extra dimension there. And these are our foam adhesive strips that we're using here. And they're very quick and easy to use. You cut them to whatever size you want. And they work the same way as our dimensionals. So you just peel the back up. And they're going to stick right down for you. So you can see how much um, added dimension flicking gave us. Okay, and, and how much that um, black just kind of pops. Okay, so let's get back to our bow. And I'm just going to put it on a glue dot right in the middle there. I'm going to go to Lansing this afternoon, and it looks like it's going to rain, but I'm hoping not. Our upline has her last team meeting in her studio. I guess it's over and not Lansing. So we have a little carpool team going to it. So there you guys go. How fun is that? I think that's just gorgeous. I really had a hard time picking a favorite from these cards because they were all so pretty. Of course, the um, coloring and cutting is a little bit of a, a time suck, if you will, but uh, I think it's worth it. So we are going to get our goodies back out here. This is another fun fold that, um, I don't know, it's kind of a Z fold with a pop-out window. I actually like this card so much that I'm going to do it for our Demo Diva card swap on Saturday. Saturday, we have some demonstrators coming over and we do a little card swap. We do it once a quarter. And um, so we like doing that. And so I was kind of doubling up on my designs. And so this one I, I'm gonna share with them. So we are going to, my flicking, how's that look you guys? <laughs> It gets all over, but that's okay. I'm going to start off with my little banner piece. And I'm going to use some smoky slate and stamp my words. We're going to use Dear Friend. So I'm going to stamp my words right in the middle there. Okay. And then on this piece... We are going to, again, bring in that big, beautiful flower. And I'm stamping with Memento ink so that I can color it. And I have two dies. One is the die that coordinates with this stamp set. And the other one is our Stylish Shapes die. And they're going to be layered right on top of each other. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. And then this one, we're going to color with our petal pink and some soft sea foam. So again, I'm going to start off with my light soft sea foam. Give it a little shake. Quickly color in my flowers, uh, my leaves right now, and not my flowers. Shake up my dark one. There we go. And just give it some little shading and highlights. And then I'm coming back in 
with my light one and just kind of blending those two together. So there's not so much of a line or distinction between what's happening there. Yeah, and so I'm going to start with my light petal pink. And sometimes the colors that I use are because they coordinate with the designer series paper. So you want to be sure our designer series paper tells you exactly what colors coordinate with it. And those are the ones that look best. You can, of course, deviate a little bit. It doesn't have to be exactly what they're using. But um, it's kind of a baseline to, to start you off with. And then I'm going to do my dark. And give it some highlights. And Stampin' Up! really makes it so easy because you have all those realistic kind of shading lines that you can follow. Okay. And then we're going to give this a quick cutout. I'm actually going to cut it off about right here, I think. We're going to put it on that circle so we don't need all of that base down there at the bottom. And it gives us a little bit less that we need to go in and cut around. So it's just kind of a quick cut. And they're, you know, they're pretty straight lines, pretty self-forward. So, but this one, they should have given you the flower die and the bun <laughs> and the leaf die. Although they are big images and they aren't bad to cut around, especially if you like cutting. Cutting doesn't bother me. I did a, a swap card for the meeting I'm going to tonight and did um, eight of these flowers. And I'll show you that card too. I used my favorites with it, but um, my favorite designer series paper, of course. But I had these stamps out, so I kind of couldn't not use them because once I started using them, I kind of fell in love with them and had to to keep it going. So I did my swap, I did my class cards with it. I did my swap cards with it. Um, I did my <laughs> swap cards for our demo divas with it. So it this is nature spotlight on nature set definitely got a lot of love from me this past week, and it will continue to because I know once I dive into those butterflies, ooh, I'm gonna be lost right. Sometimes I'm more in love with butterflies than I am with the flowers, but the tulip is my favorite kind of flower. Yeah, well, besides the lilac that smells so gorgeous. <laughs> but um, it, the tulip, I think because it has so many different colors that um, everyone is just as beautiful. Kind of like the poinsettias in the winter time, All the beautiful colors. I'm kind of partial to the traditional red, but oh, the purples and the blues are so pretty. I love to go down to Eastern Market and and check out all the different colors. I kind of just am a flower gal. My husband says I never met a flower that I didn't like. <laughs> I kind of even like those little flowers that your tomato plants get before they um, have tomatoes, right? They get those little white flowers on them. Those are really pretty too. So yeah, if you're a flower girl, or butterfly girl, you really have to have this set. And if you like to cut, it's even more perfect for you. Cut and color. And we do have lots of dyes, though, that cut flowers for you, so they coordinate. I don't, I'm not sure why this one uses the circle dyes to coordinate with it, but they are gorgeous and I've used them a lot since I got this suite. I actually have like dyes that I need like I'm not sure how I could 
survive without them because I use them so often. Okay, I think we are just about done with this one. And again, I'm going to go in just with my little pokey tool here and get the center out of there so I can cut that. Okay, come on, pokey tool. And you could, again, use a, a little hole punch if you wanted to. Um, lots of tools that can be used for almost the same kind of use. We'll get this out. And then this is a really cool, cool um, fold. You guys are going to love. I know I love it. I actually can't wait to use it with our um, Creativity Now bundle. I have that in my mind that that's going to be the next one that I create. So, I'm going to get this little guy out down here. And this one we're going to put on flat so we don't need some dimensionals for it. There we go. So, we have our words and our flowers and our circle. And I am going to take my piece of petal pink paper and again, eight and a half by 11, score it on the eight and a half inch side at four and a quarter. I'm gonna fold and burnish and then our designer series paper, which isn't that gorgeous paper? I love that. In fact, I might use that. I'm going to. I used this side for um, class. So I'll use this side, and then you guys will have something to, to compare it to and see how versatile our paper is and how easy to use. So I'm just going to add that on top. I'm going to bring in our little mini machine here and my circle die cut. I'm not sure I'm using that big one, but let's see. So I'm going to take the biggest circle die cut. Oh, it won't go through that little mini machine, so hang on, I'll grab my big one. I didn't even think about that, you guys. <laughs> okay. So here is our big one. There we go. I barely have enough room for this one. <laughs> but it's going to do the trick. And because I only want to cut a hole in the front of my card, I'm going to make sure my card is open when I put it in here. Okay, so I have my little sandwich. My card's in here. I'm going to go about there. And put my top on. Open. I can see those dots I colored for my last card sitting here. We'll go back to that. I digress. As my husband said, did you see something shiny? <laughs> Apparently so. <laughs> but we can always go back. Oh, let's get this out of the way. And these are just kind of extra pieces that you could use someplace else if you want to. And I'm going to just make sure, yep, that fits in there. Okay, so I'm going to put some adhesive on the back of here. And again, you can use your green glue if you want. I'm just going to put my stamp and seal on there. And I'm going to glue it right to the front of these two circles I put together, making sure nothing goes over the edge. Okay. And I can see I'm going to have to 
trim that just a teensy weensy bit there. And I need my snips. Okay. So we have that and we have our words and I'm going to make a big bow with my twine and then I'm going to share that great fun fold with you guys. Okay. So we have this piece of paper that is scored at five and a quarter by six and a quarter. That's the paper size. We scored it at two. Let's do it this way. No, we scored it at two, at four, and at one quarter. So two, four, and one quarter. And we're going to fold on that score line away more, towards our right. So we're going to take our paper and fold it towards the right. And then we're going to bring it back towards the left. And then I'm going to fold this piece on my score line. Okay. And I am going to take adhesive and put it on my the panel on my right. So I'm going to put it adhesive on the panel on my right. And then I'm going to put that down to the back of my card, leaving just a little bit of a trim around the edges. So I want that little quarter inch trim all the way around it. Okay. Now I'm going to set it down, fold it. And on this edge, I am going to put adhesive. Let me think about this for a minute. I think I want it laying flat because, yes, okay. So I'm gonna leave it open like this and I'm gonna put adhesive right at the top and right at the bottom. Okay, and if I get it in the middle, I'm okay with that because I'm going to come back and put it in the middle anyways. But for right now, I'm just going to do the top and the bottom. And then I'm going to bring my scissors in. And I'm going to give it just a trim right where the circle is. Okay, and I'm going to do that on both sides. Okay. So right now, just the top and the bottom are stuck there. Okay. And then I'm going to close my card and I'm going to add adhesive to that little quarter inch space there. I'm actually going to bring this in. And just kind of stick it under there so I don't get adhesive on my card. If you're doing, if you're using green glue, you wouldn't have to do that at all. But I'm just using my adhesive. So I'm just going to pull that little piece there. And then that's going to get all this sticky instead of getting it on my card base. Okay. And then I am going to bring my circle in. And I'm going to put that right down in there. Okay. So I have that beautiful circle on there. I'm going to get that goopy tape off. And then when I open it up, that circle is going to pop out. Okay. So that little piece that I cut, you can see when it pops out on the back of my card. I'm actually going to come in and just trim that a little tiny bit more so you can't see it there when my card opens. It's those little things that 
There we go. So you can't see it when it opens. Okay? So you have that card and it's going to open like this. I really am digging that color combination. Okay, so let's finish it off. We're going to come in with this great big bow that I tied. And I want my bow to go behind my words. So I just want to make sure it's going to be bigger than my words back there. I'm going to take a little glue dot and put that on there. And then I'm going to put dimensionals. And let's see what I did with those big ones. I don't want my big dimensionals. There they are. So I'm going to take my big dimensionals and put those on my words. And I'm just going to put that right over top of my bow. All right, and then we're going to bring in some of these guys, and I'm going to use a big one up here and a little one. And then I think I'm going to put a big one down here in the corner by my words. And I'm going to trim my little bow pieces. There we go. So, you have this with this little fold to it. This guy's just kind of caught up over there. So, it's going to pop right out in the front. Okay? Or this one. So, let me know which paper you like better. Okay? Which paper does it for you? I put my words over top of that so it's not moving. That's what my problem is. Okay, so I'm going to take those and I'm going to move it down. Get that glue dot. Yep, you definitely don't want anything on top of your circle or it won't move. There we go. I have to move this little guy. So placement is everything, you guys, right? <laughs> Let's get that straight. Get it straight. Okay. I'll put my little doodad back on there. Okay, so this one opens up. And you got that little the little circle flips. So which color do you like best, you guys? The pa wood panel or the chipped paint? Leave me a comment and let me know because I kind of like them both. And let's go back in to this guy and put on, we had those um, dots that we painted black. So let's put some of those on there. There we go. Okay, so for our Spotlight in Nature class, we have this one with the simple and easy, kind of with the masking paper and the circles. And then this one with that kind of fancy little fold there. And then this one that's going to pop right up there when you open it. So you have that circle pop. Okay, let me see if anybody has any questions really quick before we let you guys go. Those were three cards of the wood panel. You like the wood panel, Carol? So do I. I thought I liked the chipped paint, but that wood panel really makes it pop. So, all right. Very pretty cards. Thank you, Sherry. I hope that you're feeling better today. I know this weather is really has my sinuses acting up, so I hope you're better. And thanks for tuning in, ladies. I have a great rest of the week, and I will see you back here next Wednesday.